them in our prayers. We will now give you a moment to get your rosary. Let's remember that we are in the loving presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and we are for death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Christ. We offer this mystery for the Philippines and for the Philippine government. Lord, may our country be united through our faith and trust in your beloved Son, Jesus. May our leaders be guided by the Holy Spirit, and their actions always be aligned to your will, O Lord. May those who work for the government put the needs of the Filipino people ahead of their own personal needs and agenda. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, Please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. We pray for an expectant and open heart for an encounter with you, O Lord, and to receive your special message. We believe that you are transforming us to become better version of ourselves. We trust in your timing and just like at the wedding at Cana, um, when we need it the most. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all the souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God. We offer this mystery for the families affected by natural calamities and disasters. May they find the strength and hope to rebuild their life. We also pray for the effort to combat global warming and climate change. May we be able to protect the environment as you have entrusted it to us, O Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and bless this a fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. We pray for the lights of Jesus, family, especially the Feast Bay area, and all the spiritual communities, that we may all continue to be Jesus to everyone we encounter. May we, as one community, continue to reflect God's glory by being channels of His mercy and love. Help us to be more faithful as we continue to strive to be in union with the heart of Jesus through Mary's heart and the imitation of her spirit through her virtues. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is, at is, is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, do, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our family, to our country, to our community, and to the whole world. Amen. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. We offer this mystery to the Catholic Church and all church leaders and priests worldwide. May they always encounter you in the Eucharist and be empowered by your love and mercy. May the actions of our church leaders always lead us to you, O Lord. Purify their intentions and actions through Mother Mary's help and guidance. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Hail Ma Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, pray for us. Mother of Mercy, pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace, pray for us. Mother of Hope, pray for us. Mother Most Pure, pray for us. Mother Most Chaste, pray for us. Mother Inviolate, pray for us. Mother Undefiled, pray for us. Mother Most Amiable, pray for us. Mother Most Admirable, pray for us. Mother of Good Counsel, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin Most Prudent, pray for us. Virgin Most Venerable, pray for us. Virgin Most Renowned, pray for us. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. Virgin Most Merciful, pray for us. Virgin Most Faithful, pray for us. Mirror of Justice, pray for us. Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Cause of Our Joy, pray for us. Spiritual Vessel, pray for us. Vessel of Honor, pray for us. Singular Vessel of Devotion, 
Pray for us. Mystical Rose. Pray for us. Tower of David. Pray for us. Tower of Ivory. Pray for us. House of Gold. Pray for us. Ark of the Covenant. Pray for us. Gate of Heaven. Pray for us. Morning Star. Pray for us. Help of the sick. Pray for us. Refuge of sinners. Pray for us. Solace of migrants. Pray for us. Comforted of the comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of martyrs. Pray for us. Confessors. Pray for us. Queen of virgins. Pray for us. Queen of faults. Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin. Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of the family. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, this only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we pray, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed, especially Father Michael LaGuardia, to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us. Konia. Okay. So the way to pronounce the Greek is to pronounce every syllable. Okay. So um, it's not actually biblia konia but biblia konia it's a coined term of two greek terms one is biblia biblia comes from the greek biblion okay which is book singular when you put it in the plural it becomes biblia it's now books as a collection okay so biblia is a collection of books it's many books and konia comes from the word diakonia. See, you don't pronounce it that jaconia. <laughs> Gagalit yung mga Greeks kapag narinig na yan. But you say diakonia. Yeah. Ano yung diakonia? Diakonia is service. Um, deacons are meant to serve. That's the ministry of a deacon, to serve. So diakonia. Is diakonia is service. So put the two words together, you have what is the word? Okay, the Bible is God's language of love. It's like you want to hear beautiful messages of love from God. What do you read? You read the Bible. Gusto mo nga pick up lines ni Lord? Read the Bible. Gusto mo na mga lines that would comfort you during desolation, that would give you strength during moments of weakness, that would give you comfort when you are distressed? Read the Bible. All right. So this is God's language of love. The Word of God is not something. The Word of God is someone.
Brothers and sisters, welcome to Father Michael Aguardo's Biblia Conia. And Happy New Year, brothers and sisters. So my name is Ira. I'll be your host for tonight. And yeah, this is another episode of Biblia Conia. And this is so exciting. Kenaman. So feel free to share this live as many as you can. And also we would like to greet our dear viewers from our different Peace Facebook pages. Ayan, from the Peace P-I-C-C-A-M. Peace OPM, Peace PM, and also we would like to greet our viewers from the Peace Eso Manila, Peace Mall of Asia Singles account, and also the YouTube account, and all the Peace Facebook pages. Ayan. So good evening, brothers and sisters. Let us know where are you watching right now. And yeah, so yeah, so I can see na yung mga early, early. Viewers natin for tonight, so keep sharing this live. So malin yung kayo na yung maging channel of blessing na ating brothers and sisters. And we would like also to greet our viewers dahil we are um we are live and napapanood tayo sa abroad. Ayan, ng mga, sa ating iba't-ibang peace, uh, peace 
pages then and also so for the benefit of the first time viewers so here at Father Michael Laguardia's Biblia Junia this is a liturgical bible study so we focus on the Sunday reading so we have the gospel first reading second reading and our dear peace later will help us to understand ano ba yung context nitong uh, nitong reading na ito ano ba yung message talaga ano yung gusto iparating sa atin ng author ng Bible. So, ayan. So, this will be another meaningful night. And yeah, we are excited. And brothers and sisters, by the way, uh, ang topic natin for tonight, the gospel for tonight is about when Jesus begins his ministry and when he calls the first disciples. And so, ayan. So, tama kayo si Peter, Andrew, and then si James and John, son of Diba? No, when they said yes to God, when God invited them to follow Him, they immediately said yes. Kaya naman, ang question natin for tonight, what is your yes to God this 2023? Ayan. So, ayan, you have the time to think about it and you can comment down in the comment section and to give you an idea, it can be about or it can be a yes to service that God has been inviting you or <laughs> so, and also you can maybe yes to uh yes to being in more intentional about doing something like eating healthy or syempre di ba we take care of our body because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit so, something like that so feel free to share that in the comments section. I'll be waiting for that, brothers and sisters. Ha? And while waiting for that, let, let me greet muna ang ating <laughs> early viewers from, ayan, from the comment section. Ayan. So, una-una na dito si Brother Sean. Hello, Brother Sean. Sabi niya, Blessed Thursday evening, brothers and sisters, watching and praying from Makati. And praying for good health and more rest. For a great January also, yeah. We will we will be praying for you, Brother Shan. And also from our dear regular viewer from DP24. Have a blessed Thursday, Biblia Honia, to our fellow sister classmates, sweethearts, kabuso, and kapatid. Hello, brother DP24. I am. Thank you. Hello, Ati Shelly. Thank you so much. And also Greetings from Sis Pat. Sabi niya, watching from QC. Blessed evening to all our live viewers and those who will be watching on replay. Hello po. Good evening again. Ayan. Ang galing-galing talaga ng mga regular viewer natin dahil mayroon na silang entry. And let me read that. Sabi dito ni Brother Shan. So again, the question is, what is your yes to God this year 2023? Okay, sabi ni Brother Sean, yes to waiting patiently with God. Continuously serving God for 2023. Ayan. And God for sure will bless the work of your hands, Brother Sean. So keep it up. Ayan. And from our dear viewer, Ate Shelly Joy, sabi niya dito, yes to receive, to be open to humility, ayan, and to gratitude, and yes, to love. I love that. <laughs> ayan, it can also be a virtue, di ba? So, so, ayan, so you you have one year or we have few more days and months to think about it. And yeah, so the most important thing is we offer it to the Lord. So, yeah. And brothers and sisters, by the way, so... After the exegesis later by our dear priest, we will be also having uh, Father Bob to give us a big message. And also after that, there is more because you will be having a question and answer portion where our dear priest and Brother Kaloy will answer that later. So it can be a question about our church, the Catholic Church, the sacraments, the history of the church, and uh, maybe the Apostles' Creed or maybe about the sacrament of marriage, of reconciliation. So feel free to send that question because mali nyo, yung question nyo, it can also bless other viewers watching right now. And so feel free to 
send now your questions. Or if you can also ask questions regarding the exegesis later. So if you want to clarify anything, so feel free to write it down in the comment section. And, ayan, sabi niya, no, ni Ate Shelly, sabi niya, pala support po kasi kami sa pagbibigay ng entry. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. So, brothers and sisters, share this live and you can also tag your friends. And before we start the program, so let's welcome a new family member where he will lead us into prayer. And also, he will give us um, an opening message and a message of hope, of faith, of love. So let's welcome Brother Lep Sumera, one of the Peace Bay Area Builder. Yeah, let's welcome him, Brother Lep. Good evening, Po. Good evening. Good evening, Sis Sarah. Good evening, everybody. So happy to be here. Gra grabe yung tanong. <laughs> Brother Lev, since this is your first time as a welcome, <laughs> as a welcome uh, tradition here at uh, no, Father Michael Lagar's Biblia Honia. So if <laughs> if you can answer the question, what is your yes to God this 2023? Yeah, nung, nung sinabi mo yung tanong, <laughs> talagang nag-isip nag, nag ka agad ako, sabi ko. <laughs> wow. But that's a very good question. That's that I think dapat lahat tayo yun ang unang tanong sa taon ba lagi, you know, <laughs> that we include that in our um New Year's resolution, you know? So I was really thinking what's my my yes to God. And sabi ko siguro yung yung sagot ko doon sa tanong na yun is yung yung palagi niyang invitation sa akin na isama mo ako. Wow. That I I I need to always include him in whatever things that I do. Uh tawag dito, sanay kasi tayo si Saira uh, baka um maka relate ka or maybe nangyari din sa itong sabihin ko. Sanay tayo that whenever we're with the community, just like this, we're doing something like this. Uh sanay tayo that yes we know Lord that you're here and we're including God because we need grace we need we need his mercy we need his guidance his word but when we're we're now in, when when we're in our secular life when in our work when we're in in the traffic when alam mo yon parang isinasantabi natin bigla si Lord so lumalabas yung yung init ng ulo lumalabas yung nanggagaling to sa isang hugot na nangyari this week no kaya na siya share ko <laughs> sabi ko nasan si Lord doon sa ginawa kong yon bigla ako na paisip that i think that's the yes that that's my yes um uh, for this 2023 na yes kay Lord na wag kong kalam kalimutan that uh isama siya kumbaga wag ko siyang iwan so, kaya kaya yon thank you for that question sis Ira very beautiful question. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Philip. And yeah, it is the Holy Spirit that led us to that question. So thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and thank you, Brother Lev. So uh, take it away, Paul. Thank you. Good evening again, everybody. This is just going to be a short message. Actually, uh, I posted this message sa aking TikTok. Oh, hindi ko po ipa-plug na uh, Philip Sumera. <laughs> look for left use a tiktok but i posted it as a message it's just a quick realization that i was doing kanina it's just kanina lang so fresh pa yung message if you could see my beloved friends yung yung background ko po uh this is my working area sa business namin and this is also our stock room okay so mapapansin niyo Medyo magulo, may mga stock sa likod ko. So, uh, that's just my excuse para sabihin mag magulo yung likod ko. But kidding aside, um, one thing I realize, no, and this is for those who who are, alam nyo yun, nagsisimula pa lang ang taong 2023, and pagod ka na. 2023 is 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 starting, right? And 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 you feel empty already. Na parang ang dami mo na kagad ginawa na parang pang buong taon na. <laughs> yung challenges mo sa buhay, yung hardship. 
Yung tipong mapapabuntong hininga ka na lang. Ay, talaga bang January pa lang. Dahil parang ubus na ubus ka na. You know what? Ang role ko po sa aming business is sa focus sa nag-handle ng inventory. And I also do replenishing. Nag-replenish po ako ng stocks. And I need to do that. I need to replenish our stocks because if walang stocks in our selling area, then there won't be financial blessing. Walang kita. <laughs> there won't be an income if I won't do that. So I, I need to know if our stocks are running low and then I will replenish it. Well, I need to see that there are also still available stocks. Kung sa hindi po nakakalam, kami po ay nasa isang uh, garment, uniform business. Hindi ko na po sasabihin ko sa school, UST. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, nagsisimula na ang, ang mga pasokan ulit, face to face. So, thanks be to God that our business is, alam niyo po, getting back into it na, blessing na uli. Alam niyo, thank you Lord talaga. We waited for this because with what happened in pandemic, sobrang huminto ang aming business. So, thank you Jesus for for this blessing na okay na uli ang lahat. So, kami po ngayon, um, we make sure that we Iyari kapag naubos na ang stock namin and there's a demand. Una, wa- walang benta. That's number one. And number two, yung mga nangangailangan hindi namin mabibigyan. So, importante that we have stocks and importante that I replenish it. Anong bottom line? Is it just me sharing my business? No. Listen, friends. The thing is this. If if beginning pa lang, simula pa lang ng year 2023 and you feel like you're already empty, you're running low already, and, and ubus ka na, maybe you also need to replenish. Maybe you need also to to be filled again, mapuno uli, mag-replenish ng stock, mapuno muli ang puso mo. And, and I'm happy that we're doing this because one great way of replenishing your, your heart is receiving the word of kaya and mong ngayong gabi ay punuin ka niya. And in the promise, sa pag-apaw mo, maibahagi mo naman yung pag-apaw na yon sa iba. May God fill you up with His love this evening. Let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, Jesus, that's our prayer. Um, sa hirap po ng buhay ngayon with all these difficulties and hardship of life, Lord, we run to you. Please, fill us up. Marami na pong empty, running low, na uubos. And Lord, may your word speaks hope and grant us um, this faith to hold on to all your promises, O Jesus. And so we offer a prayer for Father Paul and for Father Bob, whom you will use this evening, O Jesus, who will replenish this heart that is empty, this heart that is running low. This heart na napapagod na. Holy Spirit, I pray that may you be present in this gathering, in this show. Speak through us through this mission. This is our prayer. May the prayers of Mama Mary and prayers of St. Joseph. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everybody. Thank you, Paul, Brother Lef, or Brother Philly, for that message of hope and yeah, so for sure many brothers and sisters could relate to this. And so thank you po for reminding us to continuously seek God. Diba? So since this is the start of the year, so yeah, the best thing to kumbaga, um to to go to is none other than God through the word and just choosing to be in his presence. So it's a beautiful reminder. Thank you po again, brother. Left Sumera. Thank you so much po. And so brothers and sisters, we are just starting and so to help us to understand the word of God for us to 
appreciate more the beauty of the word, the beauty of uh, the stories in the Bible. So let's call on our dear priest for tonight, Father Paul, Paolo Asper, to lead us into the exegesis. Hello, Father Paul. Hello, Bo. <laughs> yes, hello. Good, uh, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. You know, for those who are coming from different time zones, isang mapagpalang uh, araw po sa inyo lahat, mapagpalang gabi. Happy, healthy, and a hope-filled New Year to everyone. And so this is our hope and prayer that uh, the Word of God would truly uh, give us that uh, hope, that needed hope, that give needed wisdom, you know, uh, for us to, to guide us, you know, to, to guide us uh, this uh, every day, you know, every day of our lives, uh, this uh, 2023. So allow me some seconds uh, to share my slides. Okay. Is uh, the first uh, slide uh, clear? Yes, Paul. All right. So uh, this coming Sunday, it's the third uh, Sunday in Ordinary Time. And uh, you know, the main theme is uh, the beginning of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, a public uh, ministry. You know? And uh, we have here the readings from uh, the book of the prophet uh, Isaiah. You know, the people in darkness you know, have seen a great light. Uh, Psalm 27, our responsorial psalm, the Lord is our refuge, our light, our salvation. And the, the second reading is uh, taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Uh, St. Paul here urges uh, the community at Corinth to be united as a people baptized in Christ's name. And uh, in the gospel reading, uh, Jesus he begins to preach in uh, Galilee, and he calls his first uh, disciples. So uh, here, uh, the the you know the central theme here is uh, God's uh, salvific love embraces everyone. You know, men and women, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile alike, saints and sinners. You know, uh, sick and healthy. You know, God's salvific love embraces. Everyone, you know, uh, Jesus, he started his preaching career in Galilee, and it's the Galilee of the Gentiles. And uh, the first reading, he, uh, Isaiah had foretold that the great light would shine in these regions of Zebulun and Naphtali. You know? So while Christ preaching uh, around Capernaum, this light is shining and that it can go on shining. Uh, Christ, he calls the first apostles. So he lays uh, the foundation of the universal church. And so the opposite of this uh, universality, the opposite of this inclusivity, you know, the, the, uh, the all-embracing you know, uh, love of God for humanity, you know, of course, the factions, you know, the party spirit, you know, very much present in the second reading. As they existed in the Corinthian community, they also exist you know, at the present moment. All right, let's listen from uh, the gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, 
casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sister Shira or Kiara. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have here uh, the gospel, well, which describes the beginning of Jesus's uh, public ministry. So in the synoptic gospels, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know, Jesus's uh, public ministry begins after his uh, baptism by uh, John the Baptist. And uh, after his retreat to the desert, uh, where he was tempted by the devil. So when Jesus, he returns from the desert, you know, he hears that John has been arrested. So uh, the first part of uh, today's gospel, it places uh, Jesus's uh, ministry in the context of the writings of the prophet. You know, so uh, the evangelist uh, Matthew uh, wants to show that Jesus he is the fulfillment, ang kaganapan, you know, uh, ng uh, propeta, ng sinasaan sa lumang tipan. You know, Jesus is the fulfillment, you know, uh, fulfillment of uh, the prophecies given to the people of Israel. And he refers uh, the prof to ref refers to the prophet Isaiah. You know, uh, Isaiah says that the Messiah will begin his ministry in Galilee which is the land of the Gentiles. So when Jesus, he begins uh, to preach in Galilee, uh, the evangelist Matthew points to his ministry as a fulfillment you know, of Isaiah's prophecy. It's a proof that Jesus himself is the long-awaited Messiah. So when Jesus, he called his first disciples, you know, uh, the gospel tells us that the fishermen you know, Peter and Andrew, James and John, they drop everything, you know, to follow Jesus immediately. You know, yet, yet this gospel, you know, tells us little about the prior experience that the fishermen had of Jesus. You know, did the disciples really know him? You know, had they heard him preach? Or what kind of person uh, must Jesus have been to invoke such a response? You know, was it a love at first sight nung uh, tinawag sila nung uh, ating Panginoon Jesus at bigla silang tumugon? Ano ba yung nakita nila kay Jesus? O ano kaya yung nakita ng Panginoon Jesus sa mga disipulo? You know, at talagang nag-click sila you know, at that uh, first encounter. So we can imagine that Jesus was a powerful presence you know, to elicit an immediate response you know, and complete, you know, a complete a response as this first disciples gave. So the gospel concludes, you know, with a description of the ministry that Jesus begins in Galilee. So here, our Lord Jesus, he inaugurates, inaugurates the kingdom of God with his work. He teaches in the synagogue and preaches about the kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's ultimate victory against all the enemies of human life. You know, sin, suffering, sickness, you know, death, evil. You know? So in Jesus' ministry, we already begin to see that the kingdom of God, you know, is upon us. All right. So when he heard that John, you know, had uh, been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. So he left Nazareth. So from the Jordan, Jesus went to Nazareth and he remained there for a short while. You know, if you remember the wedding feast at Cana, you know, it's near Nazareth and it is described by the Gospel of John. 
and of course the preaching of Christ in the synagogue of Nazareth, you know, which resulted in his rejection, you know, as described in another gospel, in the Gospel of Luke, you know, and of course uh, Matthew and Mark, you know, do not mention these events, but both of them mention a visit of our Lord to Nazareth, you know, later, you know, so Capernaum. You know, Capernaum here is a, a small town. It's a small town on uh, the northern shore of the Lake Genezareth. So it was the hometown of Peter and Andrew. And probably for that reason, it became, you know, it was a Christ's second hometown. It was the Christ's uh, base, you know, of his uh, public ministry, you know, during his missionary journeys around Galilee and the neighboring districts. So uh, the mention of Zebulun and Naphtali, you know, here it's uh, from the prophet Isaiah. And we would uh, hear that later on, you know, the explanation later on. All right. So uh, as, we, as we meditate on the first reading. And so we have here the calling uh, of the challenge of repent. You know, repent meaning to say, it's a, you know, a, a radical conversion of the heart, you know, change of mind, change of heart, you know, and it's a change for the better. You know, uh, when we speak of repentance, two, you know, syllables, re and pent, you know, the pent, penthouse, it is the topmost part of the building. You know, whenever we sin, we commit sins, we turn our back on God. And so our dignity is being wounded, is being weakened. But when we repent, you know, we repent is uh, we, we, we say sorry to God. You know, we, uh, we are contrite of our sins. And then we go back to our highest dignity, you know, to our noblest dignity as the beloved children of God. All right. So Simon Peter here uh, was, uh, is mentioned. You know, Simon, son of Jonah, was the original name. So this name was replaced by uh, Peter. You know, Kephas in Aramaic means rock, you know. And uh, in Greek, it is Petros, you know, Petros, you know, uh, the masculine form of Petra. You know, so when Christ appointed, you know, Peter as the foundation and head of the church, you know, Jesus said in Matthew, you know, 16, 18, you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. So there is also the mention of the other disciples, Andrew, James, and John. All right. So uh, James and John, the son of uh, Zebedee. So Peter and Andrew, they were blood brothers. So were James and John. So dalawang magkapatid. So all the, the four of them, they earned their livelihood fishing in the lake of Genezareth. And it's a good source of living at that time. So indeed, you know, magtataka tayo. Ano kaya yung nakita ng karpintero sa mga mangingista? At ano yung nakita ng mga mangingista sa isang karpintero you know, na preacher? You know, there must be love at first sight. Ayan. So immediately... Uh, they left their boat and their father and followed them. So all four had listened. You know, they had the, the four fishermen, they already had this uh, previous experience of uh, hearing, you know, John the Baptist preaching you know, about the kingdom of God. And they were probably disciples of John, you know. But on hearing John's declarations and having probably heard the words from heaven, you know, they left John. You know, because John would say, I'm not the Messiah. I'm just simply the precursor of the Messiah. You know, I'm not the, the big who. I'm just a mere what? A voice in the desert. A voice in the wilderness. You know, who prepares the way of the Lord. You know, all right. So, these four, four disciples must have left John and followed Jesus of their own accord. Well, actually, the three synoptic gospels do not mention this official call to the apostolate you know and this official call you know does not uh, deny the earlier you know personal attraction toward and belief in Jesus as the messiah which they had received through the baptist all right 
So they were called for a specific mission. It's not just simply intimacy with Jesus, friendship with Jesus, but it is for a deeper purpose. And that is to teach, you know, to teach about the kingdom of God, teaching in the synagogues. You know, so the Jews attended the synagogues. You know, the synagogue, it's a assembly, you know, assembly place for the Jews. You know, it's the assembly at the same time. It is the place, you know, of preaching, of teaching, you know. And uh, the Jews attended the synagogue in large numbers in the Sabbath day, you know. So this was a suitable occasion for Christ to meet them and explain his message in person to them. So what is the gospel of the kingdom? You know, what is this kingdom? It is the messianic kingdom. Or meaning to say, it's a new era, you know, a new, a, new, uh, a new beginning, you know, in the relationship between God and man, you know. So it is what we call the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God here on earth. You know? it's, and its culmination and perfection would be in heaven. So aside from teaching, aside from uh, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, there's also the ministry of healing. So there were acts of compassion and mercy. You know, these were acts of compassion and mercy rather than uh, proofs of his, you know, messianic claims. However, our Lord Jesus did occasionally work miracles to prove his divine claims. All right. Okay. Now, uh, what are the qualities of a good fisherman? You know, uh, we are called to be, you know, fishers of men, you know. So we are called to, 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 to lead people to the kingdom of God, you know. And uh, how? Through our witness. How? Through our word. How? Through our prayer life. In whatever circumstance. A while ago, it's a brother left, you know, uh, 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 sharing about the word of God, his experience in the workplace, and such powerful message of hope. You know, uh, maraming makakarelate, you know, uh, uh, sa, sa kanyang uh, uh, nabahagi kanina, you know, uh, preaching the word of God, you know, preaching hope amidst, uh, amidst that uh, sense of, uh, of tiredness, restlessness, you know, the search for meaning. So that is our role, you know. We are called. We are also called to be fishers of men and women. You know, we lead them to the kingdom of God. We lead them to the kingdom of heaven. You know, we witness hope. We witness the good news. So how can we be like good fishers of men? You know, and we learn it from you know the fishermen. You know, uh, like the first disciples. And like our Lord Jesus, he is a carpenter, but he was uh, indeed, you know, a fisher of men, you know. And uh, and uh, where is the Sea of Galilee right uh, right now? You know, uh, I think the internet. It's a modern day Sea of Galilee. You know, our workplace is like a Sea of Galilee to call disciples to Jesus. So a good fisherman must have first and foremost patience. You know, a fisherman must learn to wait patiently, you know, patiently until the fish will take the bait. You know, if a fisherman is restless and quick to move, you know, he will never make a fisherman. You know? Because, you know, uh, in the same way, to be a good fisher of men and women for the kingdom of God, we need patience. You know, and it is but rarely, you know, in preaching or in teaching that we will see quick results. You know, we must know, we must learn uh, to wait, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, maaaring uh, sa ating uh, preaching, you know, sa ating, uh, you know, uh, teaching, uh, aba na mga sila, you know, praise God. But uh, again, it doesn't end there. You know, ang tunay na, na, na fruits ng ating preaching ay makikita sa pagbabagong uh, loob. You know, uh, pagbabalik loob, pagbabago ng buhay ng tao, doon nang, nang nakakarinig ng ating uh, salita. You know, so we must have patience because first and foremost, it is not our work. It is the work of God in us, through us, and with us. Second, a good, patient, a good fisherman must also have 
perseverance. So we must, you know, never, you know, be discouraged. We always try again. Yes, we also experience discouragements, but what is most important is that we move forward. You know, so the good preacher, the good witness, the good teacher must never be discouraged when nothing seems to happen. You know, uh, we must always be ready to try again. You know, perhaps to renew our approach. You know, in uh, connecting. You know, to the people of God. Third, a good fisherman must have courage. You know, uh, as uh, indeed, uh, indeed, we uh, we must be ready. You know, to take the risk, you know, and to face uh, the fury of the sea, you know, uh, parang mga mangingista, hindi ba? You know, uh, you know, uh, ang mga mangingista, the, the, the boat is small and the sea is large. So every fisherman must have that courage, you know, uh, to take the risk, you know, and in the same way, we as uh, fishers of men and women today, as preachers, as teachers, as uh, disciples, we must be well aware that there is always a danger, you know, in telling people about the truth, you know, of the kingdom of God. You know? We must be ready, you know, for martyrdom, you know, because uh, that is uh, the path of our Lord Jesus Christ and the disciples. You know? All right. Fourth is a fisherman must have an eye for the right moment. You know, ang isang uh, wise seasoned fisherman knows well that there are times when it is hopeless to fish and uh, a good fisherman knows when to cast and when not to cast you know? and so in the same way we as the modern day uh, fishers of men and women you know we choose you know uh, the moment you know the wise moment and there are times when uh, you know uh, uh, people will welcome the truth. And uh, there are also times that uh, they would resent the truth. There are times when the truth uh, will, will move, you know, the people whom we minister to, whom we preach to. There are also times that uh, indeed, you know, the truth will harden them, you know, in their opposition to the truth. And so a wise, a fisher of men and women knows uh, that there is a time, you know, a specific time to speak and a time to be silent. All right. So also, you know, a good fisherman, fisher of men and women must fit the bait uh, to the fish. You know, so one fish will rise to one bait and another to another. You know, I think the Apostle Paul said that uh, he became all things to all men. By any chance, he might win some. So, uh, like a good, uh, a wise uh, uh, fisherman or fisher of men and women, you know, uh, we must uh, have that same approach. You know, same approach. You know, we uh, indeed uh, 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 be uh, flexible. You know, be creative in our approach of uh, you know uh, uh, responding to the needs you know of of people. You know, different needs. No? All right. So uh, uh, finally, the wise fisherman must keep oneself out of sight. Why? Because if a fisherman obtrudes, you know, uh, his own presence, even his own shadow, you know, the fish will certainly not bite. You know. So a true fisher of men, you know, is uh, uh, wise enough. You know, he would always uh, seek to present, you know, uh, uh, men and women not himself you know uh but with jesus christ he would present not himself but present our lord jesus christ so the true fisher of men and women his his eyes are fixed on on jesus you know not on himself all right so let's hear it from the first reading Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road. The land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. 
Anguish has taken wing. Dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Ace. So the reading, uh, the first reading uh, for uh, you know the the coming Sunday is uh, another prophecy, you know, concerning the Messianic days, and it is given by Isaiah. So Isaiah uh, in the eighth uh, century BC. So it describes a new era, you know, an era of liberty and joy. You know, which the future Messiah will usher in Galilee. You know, it's the northeastern corner of Palestine and had been populated most uh, part, uh, for the most part, by uh, pagans, you know, the Assyrian settlers who had been brought in there, you know, uh, after the fall of the northern kingdom in Israel. You know, Israel. So uh, paganism had control. You know, and uh, the few chosen people, they thinly scattered in the region, you know, uh, found it difficult to retain their faith in the true God and more difficult still to practice it. So all that will be changed, you know, said, uh, says uh, the prophet Isaiah. So here again, the mention of Zebulun and Naphtali. So these were two of the 12 tribes who settled in the region of Galilee after the exodus from Egypt. And this is mentioned in the book of Joshua. So brought into contempt, in other words, disappeared, you know, disappeared uh, practically after the Assyrian invasion. The way of the sea. So the route from the east, you know, uh, what's the east? Uh, Syria, Assyria, Babylon. You know, so the route from the east to Egypt passed through Galilee. And then down by the Mediterranean coast. All right. So uh, in the latter time, uh, that is in the Messianic days, the new era, you know, the so-called new era, as opposed to the old era, uh, Galilee will play a great part. You know? Or it was there that uh, Christ uh, spent most of his public life. You know, again, uh, we said a while ago, you know, uh, uh, Galilee was uh, the second home of our Lord Jesus Christ. And from there, 11 of his disciples came. So that was the gospel reading. So people who walk in darkness, so meaning to say the darkness of paganism, the darkness of slavery, you know, will be changed into the bright noonday, you know, light of Christianity and with Christianity, freedom, you know, truth fullness of life. All right. So uh, the abundant joy, you know, meaning to say numerous believers in the true God will inhabit this uh, territory and will serve him with joy in the great era that is to come. All right. So uh, dividing the spoils. So the joy because of their true liberation or freedom is compared to that of a farmer. You know, a farmer, when he collects an abundant harvest or perhaps a conquering army dividing the spoils of a victorious battle. So you see here, you know, uh, you know, uh, imageries, you know, uh, metaphors, so to speak. All right. The yoke. So all the instruments and symbols of the oppressor will be removed. You know, the yoke and the rod. You know, these are symbols of oppression, of slavery. You know, with the coming of the Messiah, there is hope. There is the grace of a new beginning. There is new life. All right. So, yeah, uh, the, the, the mention of Median. So that future will be a day of victory, victory, like the day of Gideon who defeated, you know, the Midianites. 
you know, one of the, the greatest uh, victories of the period of the judges. We hear it from the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you, might, you, you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Sis Ira. So St. Paul here not only preached the gospel, but he set up uh, Christian communities uh, in the principal towns of uh, the Roman Empire. You know, and uh, St. Paul here, he kept a lifelong interest you know, in the spiritual welfare of the communities he founded. So he revisited the principal churches which he had founded, and if he could not do so, he kept himself informed of their progress. And he wrote letters, you know, to praise them, to correct them, you know, uh, to to encourage them, you know, if things were not as they should have been. So uh, uh, the section of one of these uh, letters of Saint Paul is being uh, 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 mentioned in the second reading is a letter of correction. You know, because there were divisions in the Corinthian uh, community. All right. So I appeal to you, brothers. So Paul calls them brothers, and he begs them to be truly brothers or to one another, to preserve unity among themselves. So this unity is above all a gift from God. You know, at the same time, it is a choice. It is a decision. It's a lifetime project. So this appeal of St. Paul is not just the wish of St. Paul, but actually it is Christ's commandment, you know, who put loving neighbor as oneself next to uh, the commandment to love God. And we find that in the gospel according to Matthew. So it is the name of the Lord Jesus that makes, that uh, St. Paul makes such appeal to unity, you know. All right. I belong to Christ, meaning to say some divisions or factions began to be set up in the church of Corinth since uh, Paul left them. And these were most likely caused by the arrival of some converts from outside the community. So who is Apollos? Apollos, he is an Alexandria, you know, Alexandria in Egypt. You know, uh, he's an Alexandrian Jewish convert, and he was an eloquent preacher. And some might have thought him as a greater apostle than uh, uh, Paul, even though he was not an apostle. You know, others preferred their first teacher, Paul. So, kanya kanyang grupo, you know. And uh, uh, indeed, uh, si, uh, ito nga yung, uh, ito nga yung uh, 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 tinatanong, sino nga ba ang pinakamanggaling, you know, uh, sa mga yan. You know, of course, uh, here, uh, the Jewish converts from, from Palestine who would have been converted by Peter, you know, of course, there's another group from Peter. Peter is the rock, the head and fountain of the church. You know, so kanya-kanyang following, kanya-kanyang followers, you know, and who is the greatest? Of course, the greatest is no less our Lord Jesus Christ. You know? <laughs> All right. Is Christ divided? You know? All are brothers of Christ and in Christ. You know, and Christ wishes all to be one, as does Paul. You know? All right. Paul crucified. So it was Christ who died for them. You know, it was Christ who made them members of his body, the church, through baptism. All right. So Christ did not send me to baptize. You know, so evidently, Paul's whole time was spent in teaching the faith to the people. 
and his helpers baptize those whom he had prepared to become members of Christ's mystical body, what we call the church. All right. So I preach not with the wisdom of human eloquence. You know, it was not by human persuasion or human eloquence that Paul converted the people. Uh, so it was above all because of the power and presence of the risen Christ in the preaching of Paul. So Paul here was a humble person. It is not me. It is the power of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit in me, you know, leading the people to God. So the people were convinced that God loved them and that he had proved that love by sending his divine son to live among them and die on the cross for them. All right. We also have the responsorial son. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So discipleship, following the Lord Jesus, you know, it gives a light to the eye. It gives direction to life and the certainty and surety of God's protection. So the psalmist here yearns for the temple and the unique presence of Yahweh, which lifts up the spirit and assures spiritual and temporal blessings or well-being. All right. So uh, point for reflection. Okay. How can, uh, how can I respond or how do I respond to the invitation of Jesus today to follow me? And in what ways do I share in Jesus' mission? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you walk the shores of the Sea of Galilee and you chose people to follow you. So I beg your Holy Spirit, walk into, our, into my life today. Call me by name and give me a mission to serve more deeply your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Thank you so much for your patient listening. And thank you, Father Pao, for that very rich and meaningful exegesis. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. So, brothers and sisters, if you have any key takeaways from Father Pao's exegesis for the Sunday readings, so feel free to write in the comment section. Yeah, so we can also um we can also be, be blessed by your uh, key takeaways, your reflections also feel free to write down. And also, if you have any clarification of, or if you want to uh, ask questions regarding the exegesis, the gospel, the first reading, and the second reading, yeah, you can also comment. Okay? And yeah, so what struck me actually is the word change of heart. Talagang ganda-ganda ng change of heart. And also, the humility of Paul. And brothers and sisters, please also take note of the guide question diba, provided by Father Pao. So, ang nakuha ko lang dito is, in what ways do I share in his mission? So, diba? And makes me reflect and realize na in order for me to share or to do the mission, I should know first where God is calling me to be in. Diba? So we can also reflect that saan ba tayo tinatawag ni Lord in this season of our life. So, so yun. So as for me, it's an affirmation yan kung saan ako tinatawag ni Lord dito sa season na to ng buhay ko. And as for you brothers and sisters, for sure, uh, you can further reflect uh, or you can replay this Biblia ko niya. So diba, mas maging uh, rich pa yung reflection nyo later on. Yan. So, and let's welcome Father Bob to join us and to give us the big message for tonight. Thank you, Father Bob. See you later. Thank you. Hi, Father Bob. Hi, Father Bob. Oh, happy Hello, New Happy Year. New Year. Thank you. Happy, happy healthy. New Year, Father Bob. Healthy, New Year. I hope. Yeah, that's for sure. Still coming from your stateside. I'll be home next Tuesday. I'm looking forward to flying back. Yeah, Still hey. on the cold east coast here. We haven't had any snow at all which Whoa. is very surprising. And it's been kind of mild. It really has been. It's not been extremely cold here. So, but I'm still looking forward to getting back to the tropics. No doubt Enjoy about your that. remaining days there, Father Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I will. 
So, Father, Father Bob, so what's your yes. big message for tonight? Well, when we start the new year, we always speak about resolution, but I'm going to use a different word here. Instead of re resolution, it would be Jesus calls me by name to begin again. It was the venerable Bruno when speaking about God's forgiveness. He said, when you are sorry for your sins, you kneel down, humbly confess them. And then after you confess them, stand up and confidently, he said, say to the Lord, I begin again. And the truth is, since the just man sins 10 times a day, it's always time to begin again, and not just because it's the new year, and not just because it's January, but to recognize, at Father, as Father Dave Concepcion always preaches, everything is grace. We don't do anything independent of the God within. Remember, in the Old Testament, God is the God above. And we celebrated at Christmas, Emmanuel, God is with us. And then with Pentecost and with our baptism and our confirmation, it is the God within us. So that when you choose, for example, to listen to Biblia Conia, who made the first move? The Holy Spirit and God's grace. Even people who have been away from confession, for example, for a very long time, they might come to Mass at Aaliyah Theater, and the priest there might preach on repentance, for example. That's one of the, the themes tonight is repentance. And supposing the priest makes a pitch, and he says, if you've been away for a long time, you know, come, we have two or three hours of confessions today. The priest will be very, very kind to you, very welcoming to you, as all the priests at the feast are. And somebody might say, yes, you know, I've been carrying this heavy guilt for many, many years, so embarrassed to confess this sin. But yeah, I'm going to go today. It might look at first glance as if what the priest said influenced the fellow or the girl that's been away a long time, and they decided to go back to confession as a result. But the truth is that the Lord simply used the priest as an instrument the Holy Spirit in the priest, speaking to the Holy Spirit in that penitent that's been away a long time. And it's really what we call, everything is grace, it really is what we call the grace of repentance, to begin again and begin going in a different direction. So every time somebody comes back to confession to us, I will simply say, especially if you've been away a long time, for the past 20 years, our Lord knew that he would send you this grace this day, and that tells me that you said yes to that grace, and you came back, and that tells me he loves you so much. And that's how we really should begin a new year, in the realization of what St. Benedict said, which you hear me often quote, and that is to do what you're doing tonight when you go to confession, when you go to Mass. God always makes the first move. All is grace. And to choose God, therefore, is to become aware that you are known and loved beyond anything your imagination can conceive. Known and loved before anyone thought of you, before anyone knew your name. You are important to the mission of the church because nobody is you. And so then our Lord calls you to a deeper intimacy with him in prayer. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight. Uh, about a year ago, we developed a program. They asked me, actually, could you come up with sort of a, of a prayer program for early in the morning that we can ask people to join us for prayer? And I gave it some prayer and some thought. And we call it summons to your surrender place. When you think of the word summons, summons in legal terms means that you're called to court and you don't have a choice. You have to be there. You have to obey the summons. And the second part of what I call it is summons to your surrender place. 
Brother Bo bought, bought, uh, wrote a magnificent book. I, I would highly encourage you to read it. It's called Find Your Surrendered Place. He used the word surrendered. So I told him I'm not, I'm not copying off of you here, but it gave me an inspiration. And to remember most importantly, that whether you do this at 6 a.m., which is when we do it online at Feast Bay Area or any of the feast sites across the, the world, that you can join that. There's not going to be any talks given. There's not going to be any sort of, of, of prayer together. This is just going to be you and God and nobody else. Remember, it's really important too, and I want to point this out. The reason why I call summons is because our Lord calls us by name. I think one of the worst terms that I hear it used here in the United States and in the Philippines, when it comes to things that have to do with the feast, with the parish, people will say, we have to get volunteers now to help us with the cookie sale. No, you don't. No such thing as a volunteer. Why is there no such thing as a volunteer? Because we don't make the first move. We might hear somebody say we need volunteers to do this, that, or the other thing, and we decide to do it. And usually the Lord isn't involved in it at all. No, if you look at the gospel tonight, what do you notice? Our Lord didn't go up to Peter, James, John, Andrew, the other apostles, and say, hey, I need volunteers for the next three years. Can you join me? And I'll make you fishers of men. No, he never used that term. He always called them by name. Summons to your surrendered place at 6 a.m. in the morning, or you can go to the replay and do it at night if you want to, or in the afternoon, whatever is the best time for you to pray. That you're being called there, summoned there by name. Our Lord wants you, he said to Peter, James, and John, can you not give me one hour? Well, this doesn't take an hour. But maybe our Lord will be saying to you, can you not stay awake or wake up with me for a half hour? You see, we get up in the morning and, and we get physically ready for the day by taking a shower. We get emotionally ready for the day and we say, okay, I need to do this, that, and the other thing. And our minds get very busy and that's normal. Summons to your surrendered place at 6 a.m. We'll begin with a little bit of music, but that's just about it. There's not going to be talks given. Remember that. And you're going to do this for one half hour. What am I going to do for a half hour? Well, you're not going to say prayers. You're not going to say prayers for the first two parts of this. And the third part, you will. But rather this prayer at the beginning for the first 10 minutes will be the one in which you just prop the pillow up in your bed and say, Come, Lord Jesus. That's all. Just that. From then on, for the next 10 minutes, you will say nothing. Why will you say nothing? Because the rest of the day, your mind is going to be so active with things that you need to do. And this is rather saying, I don't have to do anything for the first 10 minutes, except Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. It's hard for us in this day and age to be still. And that basically means not to move, not to move psychologically, not to move emotionally, but simply here. All you're going to do is you're going to be quiet. And in order to do that, I don't want you to fall back asleep, but in order to do that, a good way to do it, and you've heard me mention this before, this is how we begin the first 10 minutes, is breathe through your nose for the count of four, hold it for the count of six, and breathe it out for the count of eight. And that's going to get you interior relaxed if you use your faith and your imagination that what you're taking in is that grace, God's grace and love for you. And you're holding that grace there in your heart. And then you're breathing it out and allowing it to surround you for the first 10 minutes in which you will say nothing. What we're really doing here is we are opening in our hearts and saying, Lord, 
Give me what you want me to have. That's all. That's all. Now, it's hard to do when you first start because a thought is going to come into your mind. And when a thought comes into your mind five seconds later after you've begun this, what do you do? Breathe your word that you choose. For example, I use the word mercy, but you can choose any. You can say Jesus. Just make it a short two-syllable word, holy word of some kind, and that will drive the thought away. And that you might have to do that many times when you're first beginning, but then you'll get to the point at which you'll just be quiet for 10 minutes, realizing the Lord is right there within you and that he is accomplishing things within you. And you don't have to do anything, but just be, as the song says, like a page that aches for a word that speaks on a theme that is timeless and the one God will make for your way. So the first 10 minutes, you don't produce anything. We're usually evaluated by what we produce. Here you are summoned by name for 10 minutes to be still and open your heart to whatever God wants to accomplish within you. That's the first 10 minutes. The second 10 minutes, now you're going to pray. And you're going to pray in such a way that you will pray for, first of all, you'll pray for your family by name. Then you would pray for different needs that people have told you that they have. Maybe they're in crisis. Maybe they're, they're, they're going to take a test. Maybe they're going to go for a job interview. And you mention that to the Lord, you know. Eileen is going to be going for a big interview today. Lord, let the Holy Spirit be powerful within her that she'll have a good interview, All right? So you pray for the needs of your family, of your friends, of the feast community. Maybe pray for us priests by name at the feast or your parish priest. And then pray for the builders in the Feast Bay area. There's six or seven of them, find out their names, say, Lord, today I lift Brother Bo up to you, Brother Alvin up to you, see? And you pray for them, and that's for 10 minutes, and I think you're going to find that goes very quickly. And a little bell, ding, ding, will ring at the end of each of the 10 minutes. Now, the third one is something you may or not be familiar with, and we call it the prayer of the church, the liturgy of the hours. Now, if you have prayed the liturgy out of the hours before, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you have not, I would encourage you to download what is called, and it's a free app. There's no advertisements that are set, sent, by the way, when you download this app. And it's called I-Brevery, B-R-I-V-I-A-R-Y. And download that. And when you open it up, you'll see there's several choices that you can make, but the one at the very top is called brevery. That's what we priests say, our brevery every day. Click that. And then click onto morning prayer. And then just follow it. And it takes about 10 minutes. You'll be praying the Psalms. You'll be praying the, 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 uh, the prayer of the faithful and so forth and so on. And it takes about 10 minutes. What you're praying for really here, just so you understand, when we priests say our brevery, when you say the brevery, we are praying for the entire universal church. At the beginning of doing that morning prayer, when you're praying the Psalms, you might pray for those who are in North Korea, where Christianity is the most persecuted, places like China. Places like Nigeria, where a priest was just burned to death in his house, and they wouldn't let him leave as they set it on fire. So the church suffers, and we pray for the church that is suffering. And then you would pray, perhaps, during that liturgy of the hours for your parish, for the feast itself. But we're praying primarily there in the eye breviary on morning prayer. We're praying for the whole church, the whole mystical body. Of Christ. Now you're going to find if you do this, the half hour is going to go by very, very quickly. And what it does is it lays a spiritual foundation for the rest of the day. It connects you in a very personal way with Jesus because the words that you say for the most part here are from your own soul, your own heart. 
And I think you're going to find that if you stick with it, and we have a lot of people that watch it, if you stick with it, you're going to find that once Ash Wednesday comes, you're going to really be ready for Lent, and you're going to look forward to Lent. So that's my big message for tonight, is to go online to Facebook, YouTube, I believe it's on as well, summons to your surrender place. And I think that you will, if you have this experience, look forward to it each and every day. Okay, thank you so much for listening. And now we'll get to our Q&A. Thank you, Father Bob, for um, sharing or giving us practical tips and ways how to grow in our faith. And the most important thing, how to find our surrendered place. It's very um, timely. Thank you so much, Father Bob. And let's welcome again. Father Pao and Brother Kaloy. Hello po, Brother Kaloy. Good evening. Yay! Ayan. So... Good evening po. Hey, Kaloy. How are you? In the U.S. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah, yes. But it's almost time. It's almost time to return. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yeah, Father Pao, are you there? So we will be starting our question and answer portion. So, brothers and sisters, you can still send your most um your top questions, and yeah, you can type in the comment section. We will wait for that. <laughs> so are you ready, Father Bob? Father Pao and we'll Brother Kaloy? Yeah. All set. Holy Spirit okay. activate. Yes. <laughs> Holy Spirit activate. And so for our first question for tonight, so this is regarding our exegesis. So the question is, how can I share the gospel to others when I have little knowledge of it? So since the gospel is about the um, spreading the word or the gospel or preaching the gospel, so, okay, Ex exegesis is what Father Powell does so well tonight. What is it? In order for him to do that, he really has to do a lot of work. And there's a lot of preparation, background material that he's able to share with us that we say, wow, I never knew that before. That's called exegesis. In other words, as Father Michael used to explain to us, it, it, it is a way to find out not only the message of the gospel, but the context within which it's being said, to whom it's being said, some of the geographical things, like Father Michael told us a couple of years ago, that the Sea of Galilee is shaped like a heart. And I remember I had never known that, but that's what he told us, you see. So he gives us this, these insights, you know, into the gospel that would never occur to us, but that the church teaches, okay? However, that's called exegesis. There's another way to approach and therefore to be able to share the good news, and that's eisegesis. And eisegesis is not saying this is what the passage means. It's saying this is what the passage means to me. I'm allowing this passage to interpret me. In other words, this is what I get out of it. A lot of times when you have Bible studies and things like that, people will do eisegesis. They will say, this is what it means to thee. And that's perfectly all right. As long as you're not going into heresy, that's perfectly all right. And the way that you share the gospel with others, the Pope spoke about this uh, at the Epiphany, I believe. And by the way, if you notice, Cardinal Tagli was the celebrant at the big altar in St. Peter's on the Feast of the Epiphany. And Pope Francis was the preacher who can celebrate it with them. But there was Cardinal Tagli up there. But at any rate, the Pope said, we do not proselytize. That's a big word that means try to convert other people. He said, that's not what we do. We, call, we try to be to others a point of attraction to Catholicism, attraction to Jesus by the way we live, right? So... It was said, I believe, by St. Francis, who said, preach the gospel every day, and sometimes use words. <laughs> sometimes use words. Okay. 
So my answer to that question is you're all set to go. If you're going to be sharing with anybody and you know you are, rely on God's grace and the Holy Spirit. You'll be surprised by some of the things that you're able to share. So don't get too upset that you're not an exegete. I'm not an exegete either. Somebody who does as exegesis, I, I'm not. Okay, Father Powell is. No. But you can still live out the gospel, all right? You can still live out the gospel. And that's how you share the good news with others, okay? By allowing the gospel to interpret you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that, Father Bob. Thank you so much. So I love that attraction to Catholicism by how we live. So exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Father Bob. Father Paul. Well, yeah, <laughs> I very much agree with uh, Father Father Bob. It takes a lot of uh, preparation because if we truly love a person, if we truly love God, then uh, we would seek to know Him better. You know, and it's not just simply information about God, you know, like what we're doing, Bible study, reading the Word of God, meditating the Word of God. Uh, but it's not just simply about knowing uh, or speaking about God. It's, it's knowing uh, God, you know, personally, knowing Jesus personally. So it's not just about we talk about God, but we talk to God. You know? We talk to Jesus. So it is not just simply head knowledge, mm -hmm. but it is uh, a felt knowledge. So head, heart, and with this uh, head and heart knowledge about God, it's you know it's uh, being applied you know in our day to day lives. You know, uh, I like so much what uh, I think it's uh, Saint Francis of Assisi who who said this: uh, preach the word of God and use words. You know, only when necessary. So meaning to say it's it's our witness. Uh, it's our witness before we speak, uh, before we preach, you know, and uh, how how uh, you know our very presence already exudes, you know, uh, you know, the, the presence of God, you know, uh, before we speak, before we evangelize. So what I'm saying here is uh, you know, more than the knowledge about God, it's it's our relationship with Him. You know, it's our, yeah, it's a day-to-day -day relationship with Him. Yes. Thank you, Father Pao. So, yeah, it's a first-hand experience. So, before, there is a saying also that before we can give love, we should have that love first. So, in connection with that, so before we can share God, we should know first, we should know god first we should know how how gracious he is how merciful he is how loving he is so that we can share that naturally and more yeah. genuine i think it comes natural when you experience yeah. someone's presence like for example when I experience uh father bob's uh wisdom goodness it's mm -hmm. easy to describe that person to to another friend uh, father bob is He's so approachable like that <laughs> when you experience it firsthand. So thank yeah. you. So thank you, Father Pao. It's yeah. about uh, our relationship. One more. Yeah, one Sorry. more. <laughs> Mahabal, you know, I think uh, it's it's good that we, we, we seek to know God more deeply, you know, through our yeah. Bible Bible meditation, uh, our personal study of, uh, you know, the Word of God. But it's, you know, more than knowing God, it's allowing ourselves to be known by God. You know, because our you know knowledge of God really it's it's limited. But uh, again, uh, you know, by the help of His grace, you know, we we share it. You know, we share that uh, uh, knowledge of God, and because we allow ourselves first to be known by God, to be loved by God. Yes, and His love empowers. Diba? It also inspires us. So thank you, Father Pao. So let's hear from Brother Kaloy. My suggestion is uh, for you to make it as a personal project and uh, to at least be able to read all the four Gospels. And that way, you'll be able to get to know Jesus more. Uh, in my case, I made it as my personal project to read the Bible uh, from cover to cover. And it took some time, but I was able to finish it. 
and uh, most especially the the gospel according to John, because this is the kind of gospel wherein you will experience Jesus talking to you, and uh, in that way, you'll be able to to share to other people uh, the good news, which is actually who is actually Jesus Christ, our Lord, and. Uh, by living out what we have read and what we have heard, how the living word of God has touched us, then we become a living gospel, just like what Father Bob said and what Father Paul uh, said earlier. In the, for instance, in the exegesis earlier, Father Paul mentioned that uh, as fishermen, we should be patient you know, because fishermen are very patient and just by being patient you know, in our workplace at home uh, together with our friends or even uh, in the public transport wherever we are we are already a living gospel mm -hmm. and the people will be touched by that and uh, we have already preached about the patience of jesus how God is uh, very merciful to us, that even though we commit sins, God continues to bless us. God continues to make the sunshine rise and uh, uh, let the air uh, pass through our nostrils and enable us to breathe. <laughs> so read the Gospels, that's my suggestion, and then be a living Gospel to other people. That's a good point, that read the Gospels. A suggestion maybe you want to do during Lent is we read a lot of bad news, but maybe Jesus is summoning us by name to read the good news. And one of the ways you might approach it is simply to sit down, for example, with the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest of the Gospels. And read it without stopping. And you'll see that it's a page turner, as they would call a book that's getting a great review. Mm -hmm. If you read it all at once, it has a profoundly different effect than just reading some paragraphs at a time, which is what we do basically, don't we, on Sunday. We're taking a paragraph or two out of the whole of the gospel. There was a Broadway play back in the 70s simply called the Gospel of Mark. And Alec, Alec McGowan, a famous uh, a British actor, died only about four years ago. He simply would come out on stage. There would be a small desk, a chair, and a Bible there. He said, in case I lose my place. And he would simply do all the characters of the Gospel of Mark. And it got rave reviews because the people said, we never heard it as a whole gospel before but only in different paragraphs. But if you read the entire gospel, and it'll take about two hours, the average reader would take about two hours to read it, it'll have a profound effect on you, okay? So that, and, and one thing about, you know, that, that Father said and that I said about, about, you know, preach the gospel, you might be the only gospel that some people will read today. Aww. So the good news. There was a bishop here in the United States that put it well. He said, our problem with Catholicism here in this country, he said, there are too many unhappy heralds of the good news, is the way he put it. So we want to be happy heralds of the good news because the gospel is one of joy. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Father Bob. Thank you so much. So, yeah. <laughs> so, let's now proceed with our next question. So, the question is, how can we, in the community of the feast, be better disciples? This way. All right. Better. Just, you know, calling people, discipling others. Oh. And I give a simple answer to this. Make a friend first. Don't go proselytizing, all right? Don't call trying to convert people. Mm. Make a friend. Be a friend, especially in good times and a bad, if you will, a person's going through a crisis or something like that. How do I disciple them? By being a friend. And then finally, by introducing that new friend 
and asking our Lord for the appropriate time to Jesus. And how do you do that? Invite him to the, to the feast. So they've experienced you as making the first move to make a friend, and you've stuck with them for a while through thick and thin, got out to lunch with them, maybe to a movie or to dinner. And then at the appropriate time that the Holy Spirit will move you and say, hey, would you like to maybe join us at the feast? And then you let the, the preachers take over, the music take over, the experience of community take over. So it's a community of two to begin with. And then a summons, if you will, to uh, friendship and living out that friendship. And finally, when the time is appropriate, to introduce that person to Jesus by way of the feast. Mm. And being a good listener. Wow, yeah. So very practical. Make a friend, be a friend, and just allow God to do the rest. So thank you, Father Bob. So, Father Pao? <laughs> yeah, so how to be a better disciple. I think a discipleship, uh, uh, it's all about relationship, you know, it, uh, you know, relationship uh, with Jesus. So love more Jesus deeply and allow yourself, allow ourselves to be loved by Him, you know, and I think uh, uh, all our relationships will follow. You know, that's what the Saint Augustine would say, you know, love God and do whatever you please. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, well, you know, uh, it all begins with that, you know, uh, uh, love for Jesus and we allow ourselves, you know, to be loved by him, to be transformed by him, to become, you know, uh, the disciple he, uh, he, uh, we ought to be, you know, after his uh, example. Yes. So for Father Paul, love is the answer. So it's about <laughs> allowing God to love us and us loving God, being intentional in loving God. So, yeah. So, Brother Kaloy? Spend more time in prayer because uh, in that way, we'll be able to have a deeper relationship with uh, Jesus. And uh, having a deeper relationship with Jesus will make us uh, better disciples. Uh, just like uh, what Father Bob uh, shared during uh, his big message, the psalms would be of great help to really begin the day by spending time in silence uh, with the Lord and just allowing Him uh, to penetrate our being without doing anything. And uh, hopefully it will uh, help us to become uh, more friends with Jesus and to gain more friends afterwards. Uh, you know, in the gospel that uh, we have heard earlier, uh, the calling of Jesus to Peter, James, uh, Andrew, and John were so uh, was so quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, this happens to us every day that Jesus calls us, and uh, most of the time it happens quickly, and we are unable to recognize it. And in times that we don't recognize the calling of Jesus, we fail to respond, and we miss the opportunity to become good disciples. But uh, when, when we are uh, attuned, you know, when we are always open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, when we are having uh, this uh, real time in prayer, we become more sensitive and uh, we are able to respond uh, immediately, just like what the first four disciples did. Yes, thank you, Brother Kaloy. So, spending more time in prayer, and I believe it is also in prayer that we build intimacy with God. So, ganda, no? Pra practical steps. So, I hope, brothers and sisters, you take note of that because it is really, uh, it will be beneficial for us. And, yeah, and on times now, we are, um, diba, yung nalulobat na, to give so we can do this uh, uh, steps na binigay sa atin ng ni Brother Kaloy, ni Father Bob, and ni Father Pao. 
So, thank you so much. So, for our next question naman po, um, a question from a dear viewer, was there a time when you said no to Jesus? So, since sa gospel po, it's about saying yes to Jesus, the, the, the first disciple saying yes. So, the question here is, was there a time when you said no to Jesus? Well, basically, every time when we sin, we say no to Jesus. We kind of turn our back on him. And if I look back over life uh, and the many mistakes, many, many mistakes that I made, it was because I listened to my own pride instead of listening to Jesus. All right. So that's how we do it. Usually pride is even Brother Bob as well. Like you said, the reason we don't forgive ourselves and can't let go of the guilt is because of pride. And usually, you know, if a person reflects on their day or over the years of their life, well, see, there's many times in which we left Jesus out of the decision. <laughs> OK. And when that happens, we, you know, we can make many mistakes, many, many mistakes. So, yeah, sure. I think any of the three of us could point to different instances in which we've said no, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father Bob. Father mm -hmm. Pao? Yes, of course. You know, <laughs> even as a priest, you know, uh, you know, I, every time you know I commit sins, you know, I would say it's it's a it's a no, you know, to to uh, mm -hmm. to the love of God. But again, you know. Uh, you know, in in my personal experience, you know, God would find ways, you know, to to really transform that no into yes, you know. <laughs> so uh, really, you know, it's it's his uh, it's his grace uh, that uh, leads me to to uh, transform those no's, <laughs> the personal no's, to a deeper yes, a deeper uh, surrender. You know, to 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 him, you know, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I that made me uh, more uh, made me uh, appreciate more uh, my priesthood, you know, and uh, you know because um, you know as as uh, <laughs> as a human person, you know, also you know as uh, uh, I also have my own share of weaknesses, you know, and sinfulness, but uh, indeed, you know, uh, the yes of God uh, is. Uh, you know, uh, uh, more and more uh, evident, you know, in those uh, no's, you know, <laughs> that I committed. And uh, that uh, made me uh, indeed, uh, indeed, uh, uh, open myself, you know, to, to, uh, to, to say yes with a deeper faith, with a greater humility. You know, of course, all these uh, are uh, coming, you know, for, from him, from his grace. Yes. So thank you, Father Pao. So let's hear from bro Brother Kaloy. You know, my brothers and sisters, whenever we say no to Jesus, we always go back to zero. Because uh, the will of God for us is that which is really good. So whenever we turn our back against God, uh, we miss the mark. That is what sin is. You know? I guess uh, what Father Bob mentioned earlier, missing the mark. The real meaning of sin is missing the mark. And so when you miss the mark, because it's not the bullseye, the score is zero. <laughs> and uh, I have a very concrete experience of this because when uh, the Lord sent me to Talikud Island for the Divine Mercy Apostolate, it came to a point that... Uh, uh I, I chose another path but several years later i i was led back to the same place and now i'm doing it the divine mercy apostolate and during that time that i was not into the divine mercy apostolate uh, i was happy with what i was doing but uh, there was no peace and uh the happiness is not actually joy because God has prepared something for me and God wants me to do something, a particular mission. And so now that I have dedicated my full life, this uh, particular apostolate, now I, I began to see uh, many wonders, 
no? miracles taking place just right before my eyes. Because uh, finally, I have uh, made the decision and I finally found where God wants me to be. So every time we say no, we will always find ourselves uh, going back to zero. You know, I remember the the game snakes and ladders. You know, there it's a certain a certain point uh, when you get to a particular box, and uh, when the the box uh, has this snake that uh, bites you, you know, go back to the first square. It's just like that. <laughs> So when uh, we feel and we get to know what God really wants for us, let us our full trust to Him so that Brother Kanoi, are you still? Looks like you got frozen. I, I just want to mention something because I really think it's important that we understand what he means by going back by going back to zero. Okay, by missing the mark, you get a score of zero. That's the way it is in a game. However, when it comes to our spirituality and our spiritual life and we commit sin, we never go back to zero as if nothing in the past counts anymore because we've committed this sin. A lot of people believe that, that Jesus could never forgive them. I'm a zero in his eyes. That's not a good spirituality. All right, missing the mark and my score is zero. Yeah, I can see that. But that when you sin and you need to go to confession, that you've gone back to zero, meaning there's been no growth at all. All the growth that you've done up until that point doesn't count anymore. Yes, it does. <laughs> it really does. So I think we, there's a little nuance there that I, I, I thought was very important. I'm a spiritual director anyway, so I'm telling tell them that we don't go back to zero in the sense, in the sense that the past doesn't count anymore uh, and the good that we've done. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. All right. But going back to, to zero in the sense that, ah, missed the mark again. Got to go in and start all over again. Start, begin again. As, as, as uh, the, the venerable Bruno says, we can always begin again. Almost at the end of the day, we say, oh, God, if second chances and new beginnings, here I am again. Right, because that, that's the way life is. But that we go back to zero in the sense that all the good we've done up until that point doesn't count anymore. Got to be very careful there. Thank you, Father Bob, for that reminder. So going back, Brother Kaloy, we've lost you earlier. So, uh, yeah, on what part? <laughs> <laughs> going back to zero. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, I heard what Father Bob is saying because. Uh, I confess the same sins to Father Bob, and uh, that, that's his usual reminder to me. And uh, uh, Father Bob would always tell me that uh, you begin where you fall, and you begin again. And uh, it's not that uh, uh, all the things, that the, the, the effort that you have made uh, is not uh, being recognized by the Lord. But... Uh, uh, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, I just found myself doing the same thing again. You know, I left the Divine Mercy Apostolate, went and chose another path, but God made a way for me to be able to go back. So now I'm back to the Divine Mercy Apostolate. And, uh, this is where I have found my peace and joy. So uh, that's uh, what I would like to, to share. So it's not uh, really uh, going back to zero, wherein uh, we become hopeless and uh, to be in despair, but uh, to really to really try to find what God wants for us, what is His will for us, because that is the real path that would give us peace and joy. Thank you, Brother Kaloy. So, yeah, to still persevere, to go back again and again. <laughs> so, thank you for that reminder, Brother Kaloy. For sure, many could relate to that. Thank you so much. So, for our next question, uh, I this is regarding uh, the 
big message the finding the surrendered place so what do i do when i keep getting distracted during my morning prayer okay distractions are normal it's not a sin okay distractions are normal and one of the ways one of the there's several but one of the ways that i suggest is when you've been distracted and then you come back is to say you know oh lord what i was thinking about just now and you pray and tell him that okay this is particularly going to happen during that first 10 minutes and it is normal stick with it you might feel as though i wasn't still i wasn't quiet there are things occupying my mind some days you're going to be fearful and worried about things but you're still bringing them before the lord and sitting with the lord and trusting that he's going to bring about good out of whatever bad's going on but don't worry about it because if you you worry too much about it you'll be preoccupied by it when you're in the quiet a lot of people have a problem with silence right it's not easy but if you stick with breathing that word like mercy the thought will go away if the thought when you're first starting this doesn't go away that easily then when you come back to the lord say i lord this is what was going on but try for the most part during that 10 minutes not to think it's a thoughtless 10 minutes it's simply opening your heart it's going to take a discipline it's going to take time until your breathing of your word that you choose begins to make you peaceful whenever a thought comes to your mind so it's not going to be easy at the beginning but at least you're saying lord i'm still going to give you this 10 minutes no matter what happens and i open my heart to you if i mess up by being distracted lord i just want to let you know that and that's what we call being honest to god mm, yeah so thank not you be yeah. not afraid <laughs> thank you for that wonderful reminder father bob so father pao yes uh that's a great reminder from father bob you know uh, distractions are normal and uh of course they could come from the enemy you know uh who uh indeed you know uh would want us uh you know uh, to be away you know from our uh, intimate experience with the lord but uh, i think uh well uh distractions could be our matter of prayer you know it's it's uh we are being honest with the lord lord i'm distracted you know and uh you know uh i mean it's it's where the holy spirit you know <laughs> uh would come to our rescue when we are honest you know uh with what we are and what we are experiencing at the moment you know no filter as what the millennials or gen z would say you know no filter uh with the lord you know uh because uh, he knows us uh, through and through so yeah distractions uh, could be uh you know uh could uh you know uh, be our our you know uh uh, uh uh matter you know matter for for prayer you know uh, being honest with the lord i'm distracted mm -hmm. and so uh have mercy on me and always remember in, in in your in your the very question that you asked it shows that this is important to you yeah. and if it's one thing our lord really recognizes knowing us inside and out he knows your sincerity so don't be afraid yeah. wow yeah so thank you for that father Paul and father bob so let's hear from brother Kaloy. oh I'd like to give a practical suggestion. For me, whenever I am really distracted with my prayers, I just go to sleep. In that way, I will be well rested. And in the following opportunity, I will be able to uh, pray well. So for instance, uh, in the evening, if uh, I'm very much distracted, I would rather sleep early, even at around 6 p.m so that uh, I would be able to pray well early in the morning at, at three. So, and uh, I have found it to be more effective because I have, uh, I am well rested. So my body is uh, in the right disposition and I have uh, enough energy to, to pray. And uh, when still distractions uh, persist, I just uh, ignore them. Father Bob would always tell me that, and uh, to increase 
little by little of the time allotted for silence, we can begin uh, by being uh, silent within uh, five minutes. Then later on, we increase it to 10, 15, and 30, then to an hour. Until it becomes a habit, no, Father, eh, Brother Kaloy? Brother Kaloy, are you still there? Yes, yes, Lord. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for that, Brother Kaloy. And so, so we have uh, one question left here, but it is a light question, actually. So, <laughs> so do you make your New Year's resolutions, dear fathers and brother Kadoy, <laughs> from a curious viewer? I never make New Year's resolutions. I never make them. Why? My least favorite, my least favorite night of the year is New Year's Eve. I go to bed before midnight. Why? Because it signals the end of, of the holidays. You know, we go into the doldrums of January. No, I've never made a New Year's resolution in my life. Okay. But there's a difference between making a New Year's re re resolution and then kind of taking a look at those areas of my life where I still need to repent, where I still need to grow. And then suddenly lens here and I can begin doing that in earnest. So I don't make them because when I made them when I was younger, I never kept them. Most people don't keep them because it's an independent decision that people make a New Year's resolution without first connecting with our Lord in prayer and saying, what do you want of me in this new year, Lord? Here I am. I've come to do your will. I open my heart. Let me find ways of knowing how you want me to be different this year. But no, I've never, I never make New Year's resolutions, ever. <laughs> Thank you for that honesty, Father Bob. <laughs> never. Okay, so Father, Father Pao, do you make New Year's resolutions? Uh, after hearing uh, Father Bob, you know, <laughs> I would like to revise my, <laughs> my uh, mindset of New Year's resolutions. <laughs> So it's more surrendering, you know, it's more, uh, you know, seeking the Lord's presence more than, you know, making this personal resolution. So it's uh, more than, you know, asking what, what do you want? You know, what is, you know, what is uh, God's uh, dream for me? What is God's vision for me this year? What is God's project for me more than our personal project? You know, I think it's also good that uh, we begin the year with the end in mind, you know, as what uh, Stephen Covey would say, begin with the end in mind, you know, with that clear uh, vision. You know, of course, uh, it is uh, that vision comes from as a fruit of prayer, you know, personal conversation with the Lord, you know, with that vision of what or who do you want to be? You know, uh, uh, this year, you know, what is your heart's deepest desire? Of course, uh, these are all, you know, uh, would be fruitful, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in the atmosphere of prayer, you know, only with, with uh, you know, that uh, surrender, uh, atmosphere of surrender, could this be fruitful uh, and be uh, indeed, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, uh, it would push through. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Father Paul. So, Brother Kaloy. Uh, me too. I, I usually don't do a New Year's resolution. But uh, what I always do is uh, a resolution right every after uh, celebrating the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So I do monthly resolutions. And uh, it, because it's part of the act of contrition, I firmly my resolve with the help of your grace to confess my sins to do penance wrong in my life. So, but uh, what I'm personally uh, personally working on uh, right now is to have this attitude of not putting limit to God, not putting limit on Jesus because uh, He is God and everything is anything is possible for Him. So that's what I am personally working on <laughs> right <Wow>. now. <laughs> that's a beautiful reminder to to not put limit to God. No, so thank you, thank you, dear fathers and brother Kaloy. So yeah, that's the last question. And so thank you so much for you. your honesty, your wisdom, and for sharing your reflections, your personal 
Yeah. So thank you so much. And before we proceed with the announcement, we would like to ask your final blessing, Father Bob. Let us pray. Lord our God, we're so thankful that you know us so well inside and out that you still, despite our sinfulness, you still call us by name to be your followers. We don't follow a message. We follow you first, Lord, and then we can spread the message. So let us this week uh, open ourselves one day at a time to go wherever you send us. Says Father Michael Judge, uh, pray, Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me see who you want me to see. Let me say what you want me to say and keep me out of the way. So bless us for this week ahead, and thank you for this week that has been. And may Almighty God bless and keep each of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much again, dear fathers, Father Paul, Father Bob, and Brother Kaloy. And yeah, so let's uh, proceed with the announcements. So brothers and sisters, so... We invite you again to join us next week, so same time, 8 p.m. And our topic for next week is Beatitude. So invite your friends and share this poster. And you can also continue to send your top questions and by scanning the barcode flash on the screen because our dear fathers and brother Kaloy would love to answer that. Thank you. And we continue to invite you to our weekly program. So we have these on Sunday. So three sessions and yeah, and flash on the screen, yung mga events and what to look forward in the coming days. So you can screenshot it and share it also with your friends. Thank you so much. And if you have been blessed by this Biblia Hunia and would love to share your love offering, so you can send that through the bank account, the Union Bank account, flash on the screen. You can also send stars through uh, by clicking the star button in the comment section. And you can also send via GCash and by scanning the barcode flash on the screen. And that's all for tonight, brothers and sisters. We hope you have been blessed by tonight's episode of Biblia Hunia and we will see you again next week. Thank you so much and have a meaningful week ahead. God bless you!